Thank you for joining us today. My name is Claudette Esterin Campbell, and I am the chairperson and president of this foundation. Today's focus is on our theme for this year. I am woman, innovative, and resilient. The directors of this foundation were consulted for suggestions for our sub-theme for February, which is the month we're entering. And it was decided that we should break down our year's theme, I Am Woman, Innovative and Resilient, into sub-themes to help our viewers better understand what we are about when we say innovative and resilient. So breaking down the sub-theme, innovative, it was suggested that we need to be bold and confident to be our most creative selves. Therefore, our focus today and throughout this month is on boldness. To begin, let's look at the story of Hulda the prophetess, a lesser known but extraordinary woman in the Bible who unashamedly spoke about what she believed to be God's truth. Hulda's story is found in 2 Kings 22, where she is sought out by the high priest and other officials to inquire of the Lord on behalf of King Hosea. Despite the message of judgment and destruction she delivered upon the people of Judah for turning to adultery, Hulda did not hesitate to speak the truth. Let's listen to Pastor David Guzek, who gives a great summary of Hulda's only mention in the Bible and the significance of this record. I want to talk to you about a woman who was a great woman in the Old Testament, but maybe you've never heard of her. Her name was Hulda the prophetess. Here we go, 2 Kings chapter 22, starting at verse 14, where we read this. So Hilkiah the priest, Akiham, Akbor, Shapham, and Asaiah went to Hulda the prophetess. And they spoke with her. Then she said to them, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, Tell the man who sent you to me, Thus says the Lord, Behold, I will bring calamity on this place and on its inhabitants, all the words of the book which the king of Judah has read. In the days of King Josiah, they found the long-neglected book of the law, the scriptures, the books of Moses, and maybe a few more. They found those books in the temple. When they read the book, they were deeply convicted of sin, and they made confession and repented. But what should they do next? The spiritual leaders of the kingdom of Judah needed spiritual guidance. It's fascinating to see that they went to Hulda the prophetess. Now, we know little of this woman other than this mention here, and the similar account that's also recorded in 2 Chronicles chapter 34. With the apparent approval of King Josiah, Hilkiah the priest consulted this woman for spiritual guidance. However, he didn't go to Hulda for her own wisdom and spirituality, but that she was recognized as a prophetess, and she could reveal the heart and the mind of God, she knew the word of God and could declare it. They chose to consult Hulda the prophetess. Her message, at least at the beginning, wasn't positive. She assured the spiritual leaders of Judah that judgment would surely come. Speaking as a prophetess of God, she gave them this message from God, I will bring calamity on this place and on its inhabitants. King Josiah and the priests knew that Judah deserved judgment and that judgment would indeed come. Judah and its leaders had walked against the Lord for too long, and they would not genuinely repent as to avoid eventual judgment. The way God used Huldah to deliver this message reminds us that from time to time, God's going to use an unusual messenger. God used a simple 
otherwise unknown woman who was filled with his Holy Spirit. Her boldness, as you see, is a quality that we can all strive to emulate in our lives, unashamed and unafraid to speak the truth in love. Moreover, how does boldness is also seen in her position as a woman in a male-dominated society? Her role as a prophetess demonstrates that God does not discriminate on gender as he chooses and empowers individuals based on their faithfulness and willingness to serve him. How does example serve as a reminder that Anyone willing to be bold and unashamed about the truth, regardless of gender or societal status, can be chosen and used by the creator. In addition, Hulda's unashamedness is also evident in her willingness to confront the religious leaders of her time. She spoke the truth to them without to them without hesitation, demonstrating her confidence and understanding that her authority comes not from human beings, but from God himself. Being bold and unashamed is not always easy, but it requires courage, conviction, and a deep reliance on something greater than ourselves. We must be willing to step out of our comfort zones and trust that we will be equipped and empowered to speak the truth. As seen in Hulda's story, the rewards of being bold and unashamed in our faith far outweigh the challenges we may face. We can draw inspiration from Hulda's example in our own lives today. We can ask Source to give us the courage to speak the truth in love, even when it is difficult or unpopular. We must remember that our authority comes from God and not from the approvals of us, the approval of others, and that God will empower us to stand firm no matter the circumstances. So step into your big hold up. Your step into your hold of big girl Andes with us this month. Be bold, be courageous. Thank you for watching and have a blessed rest of your Sunday.